over this wife. <laughs> There's just something about prints against my skin when the weather is warm. Like the the matrimony of everything just makes sense. Like I don't even need to try too much. Good morning, Kdivas, and welcome back to another sewing vlog. This video, I'm going to be trying to make a long maxi dress that has a tie front detail sort of on the center front, has a really skinny adjustable strap. I'm thinking V neckline as well. So like the whole front of the dress is tied in on the front and there may be a zip on the side. As for the skirt, I haven't really decided what I want to do. I don't know if I want to do like a full circle skirt or something that has like maybe tier levels. We'll figure it out as we go along but basically i'm going to be showing you guys how i make the pattern how i cut and sew the dress as usual because you guys seem to like it when i show it in this like real time vlog style manner so if you'd like to see how to make the dress and make sure to keep on watching give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy it thank you guys so much on the love on my last few videos and even though i took a last weekend off because it was just a lot to do like i had a pop-up for a week so i couldn't really like film and edit and still come and make tutorials it was just a lot so thank you so much for the understanding and yes i am back i hope to stay consistent and whenever i take any breaks i'll just let you guys know on the community tab on my channel or, or maybe on my instagram we'll see how it works but with that being said let's get into the tutorial i will show you guys the fabric i'm going to be using show you how i make the pattern how i cut and sew and then the final reveal at the end this dress better come out nice because i i know it's something that i would definitely wear out mm -hmm. hello like it is print it is ankara and it is summer the best combo ever so make sure to keep on watching i hope you guys enjoyed this video and with that let's get started so the dress design i'm going for in this video is one that has a fitted bodice and slim adjustable shoulder straps the zip i think i'll place on the center back of the piece and then the skirt is a long maxi floor length i'm thinking about doing something that has paneling as so there is like a seam on two seams on the center front and one seam on the center back the bodice also has a tie detail on the front which helps in to cinch in the bust and the waist area of the dress so i have my sketch ready here this i would highly recommend that you do before you create especially a design you haven't tried before because that just gives you clarity on the pattern that you need to make as well as the measurements you need to take so i have sort of a rough idea of what i need to do and i've decided on the skirt i'm going to be going for like an a-line skirt that flares out from the waistline out towards the bottom but the way the paneling is cut is there is a center front panel and then there are two side panels that will join on the center back now you can decide to have like a full circle bottom skirt you can start to do like you know the tiered ruffled style it's really up to you whichever sort of style of skirt you decide to add that would work as well so i've written down the measurements i need i'm going to be measuring across my chest so i have a nice fit around here i'm going to be measuring around my bust measuring around my waist um the half length which is from here to here so because it's going to have an adjustable strap that you can use to make it you use to make the bodies tighter on the body or looser so just from like here to here that is going to be my half length i don't know if that's the right name if you know the right name as usual let me know in the comment section down below but i just call it half length because sort of like half of the bodies i'm going to be needing that i'm going to be deciding on the skirt length and because it's a line i would not be needing the hip measurement but you can just sort of like take that down for reference as you sew along the way we also decide you also need to decide how long your strap is going to be so the strap that ties up on the front i say just have it long enough so you can have like a nice bow if you want to and you could even do like decorative designs kind of decide to tie back around your neck so you have flexibility and versatility for the function of that strap on the front 
Now I'm going to be starting off with making the pattern for the top. First up, I'm going to be drawing a long vertical line that will become my center front line. And along this line, I'm going to mark my half length. So I'm going to mark this at the bottom and somewhere at the top. Now along the bottom edge that we've marked, I'm going to be marking a quarter of my waist measurement. I decided not to put a dart because of how the design of the front is. Now I'm going in here to mark about 5 inches upwards so that helps me to get my bust line and I'm just going it across like so. Then I'm going to go in and mark a quarter of my bust measurement along my bust line like this. You can add a little bit of ease if you want but once I'm done marking that I would extend the line so it meets my point so I have the correct measurement for the front of the dress. Now here I'm just marking the middle point and I'm going to draw in a long vertical line. This is going to sort of guide me when I am doing the shape of the ribbon so it does not go way beyond my bust or nipple area. So now that we have the bust and the waist done, I'm going to go in to draw in the neckline and the arm curve. Now I went for a very deep neckline and to help me do that I am marking the top of the half measurement on top of that vertical line that we drew and then I'm going to be drawing the neckline like this yours doesn't have to be that deep I just wanted mine a little bit deep and then I'm marking one inch above the bust line and I'm going to draw the arm curve to meet the one inch points that I just did so the arm curve does not go too low below my bust on the side and I'm just drawing in the side seam of the front like this and the next thing you need to do is draw in the shape of the keyhole detail. Now I wanted mine to be on the modest side, not too deep because I wanted it to be able to cover my under bust a little bit. So I just drew that in with my pattern master and my marker pen. The next thing you need to do is to extend your center front by about 25 inches. That's how much I worked with. I just extended it outward horizontally like this and then drew in a long horizontal line from the bottom of the, my keyhole detail and then from the top of the front neckline i sort of like made sure it went downwards like this until it came down to about 1.5 inches so you have somewhat of a slant so this is what the front pattern looks like but before I add my seam allowance I'm going to go ahead to trace off my back pattern. Now the back is essentially the same as so you have that center back edge like this which I would add a seam allowance for. You have the waistline but I'm going to be adding a dart along the back waistline that is about one inch or two centimeters wide. I'm transferring that middle point and then the back neckline is quite low. It goes to about where the bust line is and then it comes down to a straight-ish line. Now I'm just marking the back dart on that middle point area and the dart is about 4 inches tall. Connect that to the side points that we marked so we have the dart shape drawn. I decided to add a back dart because I wanted the back to be nice and smooth on the dress. Now since you've added that, that, just remember to add that allowance along the waistline so that it still fits around your body. So now I'm just going in here to add a 1 cm seam allowance around my back pattern. I'm going to add seam allowance around my front pattern as well and cut out the front and back pieces. Now this is what the front and the back of the dress looks like. This is sort of like the main top of the dress. The shoulder straps I will just cut straight onto fabrics because they are just basically rectangular strips that we'll be needing later on. So now that we're done with the back, I'm going to go ahead to focus on working on the skirt, which is somewhat of an A-line skirt. And for the skirt, the first thing I did was to draw a horizontal line like this that will become my waistline. But the way you draw the skirt pattern is whatever your measurement is on your waist, you divide that by three because you're going to have three panels for your skirt. Now after dividing that by 3, you go ahead and divide by 2 because I'm making the pattern on a fold. If you want to make your pattern as a whole, then you can go ahead and work with your measurement divided by 3. But after dividing it by 3 and by 2, I ended up with 4.85 inches and I'm going to be marking that along the waistline like this. 
now this measurement i'm going to mark here and then the shape of the skirt is essentially in line so it just flares outwards as much as you like it to be and my skirt length is roughly 41 inches after doing that i'm just going in here to add a one centimeter seam allowance on the waistline the side seam and then a two centimeter hem allowance on the bottom as well as indicating that this pattern will be cut on a fold so when i'm cutting this i remember to put it against the folded edge of the fabric and once i have all of my allowances added i'll add my annotations and cut out the pattern so this is what the skirt pattern is looking like just remember as long that bottom edge of your skirt to fold it upwards and then curve the edge in that will just allow it to be a lot easier to fold when you are hemming the bottom of the dress so these are all of the patterns i ended up making the one pattern i did make but didn't show how i made was the skirt facing the skirt facing is the same shape on the waist and the side but it is about 2.5 inches wide and this is going to help me to finish the waistline of the skirt especially around the front where we have that keyhole detail but before that i want to show you guys the fabric i'm going to be using i am going to be using ankara because it's an open secret that i love prints this one has a combination of light blue red and yellow and the the shape is sort of like big they look like hibiscus flowers that's what the shape of the print these things look like to me and i know this will make such a beautiful like summer maxi gown that hopefully I could wear it to go for a picnic with Bay or summer events, we'll see, depending on how the rest of the year unfolds. But I know this will make a really nice, like, flowy gown, which is why I picked it. Now, this is available to purchase on my store. I sort of stocked this print on there. So, if you wanted to grab the same, you have the freedom to do so as well. You also be needing a zip because the dress is tighted up. It's spicy, it's tight. The dress is tight on the body, so you need to fix a zip on the side or on the center back. It depends on what you prefer. I'm going to be fixing mine on the side because I don't want a seam on my center back. So I'm gonna have a long black zip here. You also need um, those adjusters that comes in a set of a double ring and a round ring for the shoulder strap. You can get like a really slender one or you can get a bigger one it's really up to you i have both i think i'm going to reach for my slender one because i want the strap to be really skinny on the shoulder uh you might need some interfacing as well because the waistline of the skirt is going to have a facing to finish it along that edge so you need some interfacing to fuse the facings i will be making but with that being said those are all of the measurements the fabric and like the sketch that you're going to need so i'm just going in here to cut out the different parts of the dress i went in to cut the skirt in three different chunks you can cut it all in one go if you have a scissors that is sharp enough and then these are all of the pieces i ended up with we have our main front which i cut two pairs of because i wanted a nice finished edge I have my back pieces which I have a pair of and I have my shoulder straps which measure 24 by 1.5 inches and then 10 by 1.5 inches because you need a set of both. So I have a pair of each of those straps. I also have my skirt pieces which I have three pieces cut on a fold as well as the facings to help me finish the waistline of the skirt. So once you have all of your pieces cut, we are ready to sew. And I always like to start from the top and work my way down. So I've gone into pin right sides together of my front pieces of the top half of the dress. And then, then I'm going to be sewing along that bottom edge up the front of the strap and up that front neckline leaving that top edge open for the shoulder strap and then i'm going to stitch up the arm curve so we have a nice finished seam there so i'm just going in to sew on a one centimeter seam allowance remembering to leave the top of that front neckline open now i'm going in to just cut tiny incisions along the curved seam trim down any edges and then turn this front piece inside out I give it a nice press to relax all of the stitching and this is what it should look like you need to repeat this for the other side of the front so you have the two front pairs stitched up together ready to be joined to the back 
So now that we're done with the front, I'm going to grab my back pieces and then we're going to pin and sew the dart first. Now the way I like to transfer my dart is I grab my pattern piece and place it against the corresponding side, use a pin to transfer the point of the dart to the fabric on the wrong side of the material and then I mark that point with a chalk. So once I have that point marked, I can then align the notched edges of my dart to the points of the dart like so. You can add a pin or two so this stays in place as you take the pieces to your machine to sew and then I'm going to be stitching both darts up. I'm just going to be sewing this using a normal straight stitch doing a reverse stitch at the beginning and then at the end to secure my dart before going back into the back neckline to finish that off. Now what I did here was I just folded it twice like a very slim fold so I don't lose too much measurement along the side seam and then I stitched up both back necklines in this manner. I went ahead to give it a nice press and this is what the back of the top is looking like. Once you are all done with fixing up the back we can join the front to the back along the side seams. Just match corresponding sides of the front, corresponding sides of the back. And if everything was done correctly, they should somewhat match along the side seam. Now I'm going to take this in my machine and I'm going to be sewing up the side seams using a normal straight stitch on a one centimeter seam allowance. And then after sewing it up regularly like this, I'm going to take this to my overlocker to overlock that seam. So we have a nicely beautifully finished seam on the front. I wanted to give my front a press before setting it aside to work on my shoulder straps. For the shoulder strap, I've gone into pin with right sides facing each other and you should have a pair of the long piece and a pair of the short piece. I'm going to sew this together to create a tunnel which I will turn inside out, give a nice press to relax all of the stitching and these are the number of pieces you should end up with. Now I love to make my straps adjustable because it just makes it more flexible to wear and the way I do that is I first pass the shorter strap around the ring like so and then just sort of like loop it in this direction and set it aside. Now the longer strap I would pass over and under the double ring like this and after passing it over and under I then take it over to the the ring on the shorter side and then just loop this over like this so they are connected on this end and then I go back to the double ring and pass this end over and under the inner side of the double ring. Now once you've done that you should end up with a situation whereby you have one edge of the longer strap being joined together with the side that is nearest to it. So you have something that looks like this. So I'm just going to put a pin on this particular point like so, pull down this side of the strap and I'm going to take this to my machine and stitch up only that side of the strap so that makes it one connected piece and it's adjustable. So I'm just going to take this in my machine and I'm going to do a slim stitch, not too long, with several back stitches to make sure it's secure. And I did this on the other sets of the shoulder straps, so this is what they look like. Now the straps are fairly long, but because they're adjustable, I know I can make it shorter, so I am happy with the way it sits on my body. Now I'm going to grab one side of the strap and I'm going to pass it into the front shoulder neckline like this, the particular area that we left open, pull it through so it comes into the inner side of the seam like this. I'm going to add a pin there just to secure it and as you go ahead to pin the back just ensure that the direction of the adjusters is in the correct order. Once those are pinned in place, I'm going to take them to my machine and stitch them along the front and the back neckline to secure the shoulder strap before trying on the top. Okay, so I've popped on the top half of the dress just to check for the fit. Uh, <laughs> the cut is quite low. I think I may lift the shoulder straps on the back just a little bit but if you're doing yours and you don't want it to be as low as mine i mean i'll have to wear it without a bra and a vest to see how it fits but that's the first thing i can see straight off the bat like it's quite sexy um 
not, it might not be everybody's cup of tea but this is what it fits like i really like how it like goes on to this side and this side show some skin and then the skirts would start from here downwards so you have all of this area will be exposed there um but yeah this is what it looks like now moving on to the skirt the first thing i'm going to be doing is joining up the skirt panels along the side this i've already pinned with right sides together and i'm going to be stitching it up and overlooking those seams giving it a nice press ready to be joined to the top half of the dress and this is what the skirt is looking like now because i need the skirt facing to finish up that skirt waistline i'm going to be grabbing my facing pieces which i've already fused with some interfacing on the wrong side of the material and then i'm going to be joining with right sides together on the side seams like so so this i stitched up and then i overlocked along the seams and along the bottom edges as well so you have a nicely finished facing piece on the inside of the skirt so now that we have everything we can join them all together along the waistline i'm starting off by putting the right sides of the top to the right side of the skirt just pair corresponding sides as necessary and then once you have the top pinned in place i'm going to sandwich the top into the skirt waistline using the facing this is going to make it so much easier to finish up the waistline have a nicely finished waistline especially around that front piece that is open so after stitching in the waistline of all three pieces, top, skirt and facing in place, I went ahead to do a small edge stitch to make sure that the facing is tucked inside of the skirt, gave it a nice press and this is what the waistline of the dress is looking like on the inside. So once you're happy with that, you know you can go ahead to attach the zip on the open center back of the dress. I'm attaching an invisible zip here, one in black, and it's fairly long so it goes all the way from the bodice into the skirts on the back seam. So now that I've pinned my zip into that open center back, I'm going to be stitching the zip into the back of the dress using a slim zip footer. I have a separate tutorial where I shared how to join invisible zips into seams of dresses. There's a particular way you have to sort of like open up the zip as you stitch along. So when it's all done, it's invisible as it should be. So once we're done stitching the zip up, I'm going to go ahead to sew the bottom end of that center back close to finish up that particular side and the last thing you need to do after fixing and stitching up the center back seam is to go in to fold and sew the dress hemline i'm done with the dress i have just styled it on with some sparkly earrings i've done my makeup <laughs> Can I just say that I'm looking like a bag of money? Like, oh, it's actually so nice. I showed George and George was like, mm. because it's just enough decolletage on the front and you have some under boom action. However, if that's too much for you, you can adjust your pattern to make the neckline not as deep. And then you can make the width of the strap on the front a little bit wider so that covers up a little bit of boob on the top and on the bottom however the one thing i would change is i would most likely add like a dart here to just take away this little bit of excess that you can see forming here it's not that bad i can still wear it and enjoy my work but if it will bother you you can add a dart on your pattern so that just takes away i'll say about two centimeters or an inch from this arm curve here but that's the only thing i say i would change everything else turned out really really well this dress is so freaking nice and the fit on the back is just ridiculous like ha 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 ba. Ah, you just need to get sunny now and I need to plan a picnic and wear this dress. You know when you make an outfit and you <laughs> you have to make an occasion to wear it too. That is a mood I have with this dress. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. I hope you love the outcome as much as I did. If you did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. If you're going to be recreating this, don't forget to tag me on Instagram at Kim Dave Designs. I'm waiting and I'm dying to see your recreations as well. Until my next video, have a good morning, afternoon and evening wherever you are. Share your feedback, thoughts and suggestions in the comment section down below. And until my next video, stay safe guys. Bye!